it's a short demo. But for those that are just learning about Blue Iris, this is pretty much the main screen. Uh, with my setup right now for this demo, I have two cameras. And they're, both, they're basically both sitting on my desk to the left and the right of me in my home office. So you see the windows for the cameras in the, in the center of the screen. And then on the bottom, you see the timeline. And on the right, you'll see the clips list. And so you'll see some icons associated with the clip list. And I'll get into more details about what that means, but it's a visual indication that there's human activity associated with that clip versus other clips where um, it's just, it could be just like um, the tree, the leaves blowing in the wind. And then in the timeline below, uh, similarly, we mark the, the activities with an icon associated with human activity. So you can easily, you can easily see visually which clips are probably of, of most significance to you in regards to the surveillance of your house. Okay, so, so for some demos, right now I have both cameras turned off for sentry alerts. And so if I put my pen in front of the camera, it triggers, you can hear the alarm go off because I associate an alarm with uh, uh, this, my Foscom camera on my right. And I can do the same thing with the other camera. So that's motion. So you can think of that pen test as very similar to a squirrel running across the screen in your outdoor camera. So now I'm gonna turn sentry alerts on. And as I said earlier, it's a simple click of the checkbox. That's activated. I'm gonna go to the other camera, activate that. Okay, so let me try that pen test again and see what happens. Put the pen in front of the camera, wave my wand. It analyz analyzes it and no alert goes off because that clip, which is this, we took the very first frame, sent it to Sentry, asked Sentry, is there a human associated with this activity? Sentry said no, and so we suppressed the alert. So it's most significant. So I have these alerts, I have these triggers associated with um, text and email, and you can't quite tell, but um, the first two was with the pen with sentry off, and I haven't received one since. Well, I can't prove that because you can see there's only two alerts. So anyways, you can take my word for it or you can kind of confirm that I did two pen tests and two alerts came to my phone. I did a third pen test and no alert came to my phone. So that's the basic value of sentry. We can provide meaningful alerts. And then I try to test my engineers a, a bit. And so I try to like to do random things. So I'll put a tennis ball sometimes just to mess with the AI and see if that triggers. And it didn't. Um, so yeah, so you can, you can test this on your, uh, on your own as well. And if I put my hand in front of it, I don't need it to be myself. I can just put my hand, it'll trigger. So it could be the whole person or it could just be your hand. So now I'm gonna walk in front of that camera and I'm gonna show you how, I mean, me walking in front of it is, is a very easy use case. It'll clearly detect it because I'm so visible. Um, and now if you look at the screen, you'll get a different icon. So why is that? So the first activity was at 212 for the human. At 2.12.39, which is within a minute, you know, very near to the previous event, because human activity was identified again and was so close to the previous event, we figure it's probably the same person, probably the same event, you don't want to be bothered. And so we recognize on the clip list that we did identify human activity, but we do not send you alerts. 
Um, so let's see what the tally is right now. One, one, two, three from, um, uh, or four rather. No, wait, three, sorry, three alerts because one of them is from a friend, sorry. <laughs> a, a friend just texted in. So the third one was has to do with camp two and this one uh, did not send an alert. Okay. Okay, so I did the uh, pen test. I did the hand trigger, so you don't, don't need a full body to recognize human detection. And finally, I just walked in front of the camera, which is most obvious, and that clearly got caught. So that's kind of like my demo um, in a nutshell, like why Century is smart, but it's smart in very, very unique ways. Like you don't need the whole body. You can get partial, um, partial images of the body, and it'll still detect humans to a certain extent. Um, one thing I also want to keep, want you to keep in mind is, in terms of these cameras, like I've been playing with this quite a bit. The one on the left is at 640 resolution, and the one on the right is a more high-end 1080 resolution. So we say for best practices, if you go to, um, if you go to our website, website um, smarthomecentury.com, BIFAQs, we provide you a list of recommended settings. And that's why we wanted the camera information because we think we can make this even better. So as a default, we said like, if you kept it at, at the default setting, the 550 and 40 with a make time of one, which is the default, you should be pretty good. And what I'm, what I'm starting to realize playing with this more is it could be, it could be fine. But like what I realized is like with the high resolution camera, um, when I make, when I set the motion, like I, in order to make this demo effective, because that high resolution camera is, is facing a very small space. Like if I wanted to get the motion to be active for like one second, I had to like walk all the way across because it's doing the math and taking the, the number of pixels, the size of your body and making sure that there's enough motion associated with that body um, for that full one second. And with high resolution, that means at, at 1080 uh, resolution, you have to have a lot of pixels moving at once. And so um, the defaults could work, but you should keep in mind that um, even that may need to be tweaked depending on your resolution and depending on what you're facing. So like when I put this high resolution camera, which is in my office right now in front of my door with a little bit of perspective, like further back from the door, it works fine. But I just noticed like in this confined space that the make time and the length of the motion um, made it more challenging in order to trigger blue iris to send the, an image associated with that clip to Sentry. So just things to keep in mind. Okay. So that's a little bit too, a little bit too technical. That's basically my demo, the value of, of Sentry AI.